I'd like to share with you a technique that I use when I like to replace the skies when I have a photo like this, where I basically just have a really simple blue sky in the background. Now this technique is going to work best and pretty much only work on images where you have a very solid, simple background or a simple sky, and there's a lot of contrast between the foreground and the background. Most of the time I'm using this technique when I'm dropping in a new sky with a blue background or a blue sky, or maybe even just a white or a, a nothing sky in the background. Now the masking brush tool in Luminar is pretty straightforward. You can set the size, the softness, and the opacity. I'll go ahead and make sure that I have that preview toggled on. And when you brush, it's just brushing in or it's brushing out. So to create a very complex mask it requires a lot of time because you're having to get in there with that brush tool and make all of those strokes by hand. So I'm going to show you a different way on how you can create those complex masks in literally just a few minutes without having to make any brush strokes whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and delete this mask so we can start from scratch here. I'm also going to toggle that mask preview so we're no longer seeing it. Okay, so now I'm back to basically the beginning with a, a freshly opened file. I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to select black and white conversion. Now my goal with this is to make the background or the sky as white as possible and I want the foreground, or in this case balance rock, I'd like that to be as black or as dark as possible. So in the luminance section of the black and white conversion filter, I'm going to scroll the cyan and the blue all the way to the right. Then with every other slider there, I'm going to move it all the way to the left. By the way, if you don't see those color sliders, make sure you toggle that advanced button so that way you can work with those color sliders. Next, I'm going to go down to the highlights and shadows. I'm going to move the highlights all the way to the right. And I'm going to move the whites all the way to the right. And then I'll do the reverse with the shadows, move it to the left, and the blacks all the way to the left. Now all of this did a pretty good job of giving me a really nice black and white representation of this image and what I want to work with. Your photo, however, might need a little bit more push to get those whites and those blacks really, really contrasty. And if that happens, you want to click on Add Filter and then go into Curves. Then go at the very bottom, the very far left part of that curve, and slide it along the bottom to the right and then do the same but opposite with the top right and move that to the left. And you can see that that top right slider actually did a pretty good job of kind of killing some of those little extraneous little wispy clouds that were in the background. So I'm finished creating my black and white representation of my image. So up in this layer, in this very first layer, I'm going to right click, go to mask, and then I'm going to create a luminosity mask. Now I'm just going to hide this layer and just forget about it for the time being. Now let's go ahead and add a new sky. I'm going to click on Add Image Layer. I'll go ahead and choose a sky, double click to add it. Now I'm going to go back to that bottom layer with that luminosity mask. I'm going to right click, go to Mask, Copy Mask, and with that sky layer selected, I'm going to right click and go to Mask, Paste Mask. And voila, I have a beautiful mask of my scene. Now it might need a little bit of cleaning up and there are a few different ways that you can do that. And what you do is probably going to depend on how much contrast you have between your original sky and the new sky you dropped in and also <laughs> with whatever types of items you have and lines you have in your image. Some of them are going to need a little bit more um, massaging than others. But I can zoom in here and maybe pan over and I can see that this mask is pretty good. Down here there's a little bit of kind of a halo happening. So one thing you could do is, now I have the brush tool selected here, and when you have the brush tool selected, you have some mask options. So if I click on this little gear icon at the top, I can feather the mask. Now if I slide it to the right, and I'll kind of go a little extreme, you can see it's feathering inside and outside of my mask. 
I might not necessarily want that because I don't really want to fuzz the outside of my image. I just want to kind of make it the transition a little bit better. So for now, I'm just going to drop that down to two, or let's see, maybe three or four. Uh, so we'll leave it there for now. Now over in the layers panel, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So that just creates a duplicate of the exact thing that I just created. But instead of having this blending mode be normal, I'm gonna change the blending mode to darken. Now with that brush tool still selected, I'm gonna go back to the options at the top and click on that gear icon once again. And I'm going to increase the feather of this even more. Now if I toggle that on and off, if you pay attention to that foliage on the bottom left, it's really kind of fading it away. And if I wanted, I have that brush tool active. Let me go ahead and play with my softness setting increase that softness, and I'm gonna decrease the opacity to, let's go down to about 30 or so percent. I'm gonna hit the X key, which is going to toggle into my paint in mode, and then I'm just going to brush over this area. And because of that blending mode, it's kind of blending that uh, area in a little bit better. And so from here, if you wanted to continue editing this photo, maybe add some filters or a preset to the entire image, you're going to want to merge all of these layers together. So if I go to that top layer and right click and scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have an option that is to create a new stamped layer. This creates a new merged copy of all of those layers and puts it at the very top. That way I retain all of those edits below uh, but I'm still able to make adjustments to the image on a global scale.